Welcome to the Crit House My 5 series, where we delve into the artistic journeys of photographers. We explore the five images that shaped their creative evolution and their artistic vision. Today on the Crit House, photographer Sandy Sugawara, whose five images include work from Hesao Kumura, Chiaro Ubata, Richard Mizrak, Sam Abel, and Jungjin Lee. Sandy, you are, um, you have an interesting uh, life experience um, professionally and now as an artist as well. I mean, going back through your work, I, you, know, you talk about yourself as being a, a have, having a career in journalist at the Washington Post and other areas, Voice of America. Um, but your, your images are not journalism. They may be documentary in, in some form or another, but they're very poetic and lyrical. Can you, can you maybe talk about yourself as a photo professional or a photo person? Artist? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm a photographer and I am a journalist. And um, so journalism, I love journalism and, and journalism is very um, intense and, you know, um, fast pace and, um, and, and really geared toward events. And uh, I love it, but I think for me, uh, photography became like a refuge. And um, especially living in, wa in the Washington area, as things got crazier and crazier, I found myself really seeking scenes um, that were meditative, scenes um, that, um, were kind of zen-like and calming and, um, <clears throat> you know, places where I could could breathe. And I think it's also the reason that I like landscapes because um, landscapes um, enabled me to tell stories in a quiet, meditative kind of way. And it was, it was um, very immersive. And um, I felt I could bring people into the scenes um, and tell them the story differently. The project that I've just been working on, that I finished, we spent uh, four years going to Japanese American uh, incarceration camps where 120,000 Japanese Americans were um, incarcerated and um, they were um, they were innocent. Nobody was ever accused of espionage. But I wanted, in being there, we made the decision to only do landscapes and not photograph people because we wanted it to be a, an immersive experience. Yeah. And we wanted people to feel they were there and to feel how my parents feel felt, you know, sort of abandoned and lonely and isolated. Right. And that is your book, uh, Show Me the Way to Go Home, right? Yes. Yeah. Show Me the Way to Go to Home. To Home. Um, it, it was, we saw it, um, uh, it was like graffiti on the wall of one of the jails. And it, it's probably a misprint of the of the song, but um, but it, we thought it was very poignant. So you were asked to uh, to participate with us and choose five images, which some people have found to be challenging to uh, to do. And those five images would be those that influenced you or had some meaning to you. How did you decide what those five images were going to be? Um, it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think I first started and I, I picked out like 20. Um, and, um, and, and they were, you know, 20 that... I have in books and I look at a lot and different things. And I, I thought of different ways to um, to narrow it down. But when you said inspired, I, I, I thought, well, what are the ones that I look, when I look at, I think, wow, that's something that I'd really like to do, or I'd really like to capture that emotion or the way they translate um, what they've seen into a photograph is, is something that that you know um, really moves me, and so I think I, I focused on on those photos because there's so many just wonderful photos out there. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a, a yeah, there there are billions. I mean, li uh, literally <laughs> billions. So uh, I'm very excited to talk about the images you have uh, selected. So let's let's take a look at what you have selected for your five. So your your first image is from Hisao Kamura. Mm -hmm. Tell us about tell us about this beautiful photograph. Well, it's called Road. And, um, you know, when I first saw it, I, I was mesmerized. I mean, I'm still mesmerized. Um, but um, the road is this just gorgeous ribbon of light. And then you have these um, 
um, layers of light for the mountains. And then you have this tiny little solitary figure there that's dwarfed by the scene around them. And I, I, I was just mesmerized by it because to me, it, it's, it's both, it captures both beauty and sadness and the ephemeral um, quality of beauty. I had never heard of Kimura before, but I, uh, I did some research and found that he was um, quite a successful photographer in the 1930s. And in fact, I found out there were several Japanese American photographers who were on the West Coast who were successful in the 1930s and widely uh, exhibited and widely published. And then um, when um, after Pearl Harbor was bombed, um, they had to go into the incarceration camps. Many of their art was um, lost or destroyed. Um, but luckily, uh, a collector um, took interest in them and, and spent a lot of years um, collecting uh, the work. And now I think it's uh, been bought by the Getty Museum. But I thought this was really just an extraordinary photo. It's lovely. It's lovely. Thank you for sharing it. The second um, piece of art, Chira Abata. Tell us about this one. It's beautiful. Um, so Abata is one of my favorite painters. And uh, he came from Japan at the turn of the century. Um, he was, um, by the 1930s, he was a rising star in the California art scene and was a professor at Berkeley. Uh, and then when the war broke out, he was sent to a camp in Utah called Topaz. This photo, real, this painting rather, really captured the um, both the beauty of Utah and the bleakness of life at the camp. Um, and I, I find it very poetic. And he started an art school at the camp in order to give people hope and uh, al allow them to express themselves. And I thought that was also lovely. So I, when I went to Topaz, I was really intent on photographing the moon over Topaz. There's no buildings, um, but the the uh, the land itself is there and it's mm. it's bare. So we were able to uh, go on to the the land and um, and then the moon in that part of the country is just brilliantly bright. Your third image uh, is a, a series from Richard Mizrock, the Border Cantos. How did this influence you and affect you? Yeah, well, first of all, the the photographs are just hauntingly beautiful. Um, I've seen a lot of photos of the border, uh, but usually they have people in them. And uh, many of them are very, very moving photos. But when I saw this book, again, it was like I was there. It was very immersive. A and you see how along the border, the fence, there's, they have all different kinds of fences. The fence uh, fences cut through um, golf courses and communities and all sorts of strange things. And they, they have different impacts on people's lives and their scarecrows and their artifacts along the way. So I, I realize again, um, the power of landscape to tell stories, to take you to the places, to tell a different kind of narrative than a photograph with, a, with an individual. You know, I have to say, um, again, I'll go back to what I said at the, at the start is I'm not, I'm not um, a highly educated photographer in the art world, but um, so many people on this program have been highlighting the influence of Richard Mizrock's work on their um, on their photography, especially those people who have been um, sort of more, more lyrical in their um, in their approach. Um, I need to spend more time <laughs> looking at his his body of work because I think I'm missing something by not studying it as much as some people have. Yeah, he's an uh, extraordinary photographer. Yeah. And then, of course, the great Sam Abel with this image, which is one I had not seen before. So I was glad to have you uh, to talk about it. What do, uh, Tell us about this one. Well, I was um, a foreign correspondent in, uh, based in Japan for four years. And I've looked at, th you know, thousands of photographs of, of Japan and some really gorgeous uh, photographs. This is the only photograph I look at that makes me homesick. Oh. And um, and I, I I couldn't figure out why at first, but but um, I think I know why. It's it's a beautifully layered photograph. And so the way it's composed, I feel like I'm sitting at that table. Yes. 
And I feel like, so I feel like, again, it's an immersive photograph. I feel like I'm in that scene and, um, and I'm looking at that scene out there and, and he describes it in his book as a, a, a scene from a short story that will soon change. And, you know, the woman will walk off, the bus will drive away, the person sitting at the table will change. But at, at that moment, I'm very engaged in that scene. It's also a very quiet, meditative um, photo. When I tell people that this is the, the photo that makes me homesick, that, you know, they expect me to have some photo of some ancient Japanese temple or some beautiful mountain. Or I mean, Japan's such a gorgeous gorgeous country and I, you know i'm looking at a bus and some cars but it's i really a, do it's think a street corner essentially fun. right i just i love this process of talking to people like you because i get to sit down and talk and just spend time with an image that i i would not have normally spent time with um had it not been for this conversation and um and first of all knowing sam a little bit and knowing that this is his um has has meaning for me but there's also this just this sense of i mean with my own photography and and just living my own life you know i, I i've i have sat at not this table but i've sat at this table you know mm -hmm. in my own in my own world in my own place um and i have i've appreciated that but i've never had the foresight and the thought to say oh this might be, make a nice piece of art for me to capture exactly um, and he's done such a beautiful job with it. Yeah, it, it's just driving home this idea that you can make wonderful photographs anywhere, even overlooking a bus <laughs> and it's, you know, an urban street scene. I love Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, and then there's this one, speaking of images that you sent along, and I have just been living with it happily since you sent it with, um, uh, I'm going to mispronounce it again, but Jin Jin Lee. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, so I only discovered Jun Jin Lee um, a, a few years ago. Someone mentioned her and said, you know, I think you would really like her work. Uh, she's from Korea and she, she does, she has um, uh, done um, a lot of beautiful photos. This is a series that she shot. Uh, it's called, um, the book is called Unnamed Road. And it was shot in Israel and in the West Bank. Mm. What I love about um, th this photograph and others in this series is she has really captured, I think, the tension and and the intensity, the powerful forces in that in that uh, region. She has a very elaborate uh, post processing uh, re regime. I'm told. Um, I, I think I read somewhere that she starts in the dark room. She uh, prints on Korean mulberry paper, and then she scans it and then works on it in uh, Photoshop. And uh, she strives to get the feeling and emotion that she had when she was taking this photo. Mm. Uh, it, um, it, it made me think that I should be a little more daring <laughs> in, in, in my post-processing. But um, it, I, I think the photos she come out with her are just uniquely hers and they're wonderful. Well, it's it's beautiful to see, um, and it's it's also I think important to understand, which I did not until you were talking about it, that this is, um, in is a photograph in Israel, which, as we're speaking right now, is a uh, a troubled place on this earth at the moment. Um, and to imagine this, which just when you walk into when I walk into it, I see what is a fairly peaceful uh, landscape. Um, but that is not where this, um, is, t is taking place in the world at the moment. Um, so the, the, the context and the perspective is, is, is good to know and good to understand. So, um, thank you for that. So Sandy Sugawara, thank you for, for coming on the Crit House. It's, uh, first of all, a pleasure to meet you and to learn more about you. And I hope, um, others of our, others, others of our viewers will, um, take a look at you. We'll certainly link to your um, website and information about you in the show notes below. But thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been fun and, and uh, some just beautiful, lovely images as well. And thank you for all for watching The Crit House.